good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And I hope everybody's had a good week this far. And I hope that uh, uh, if you haven't, you would whisper a prayer for us this morning as we try to read God's Word and as we try to make a, a few comments on it. You know, we don't we don't have this opportunity every day to talk to people, and we don't have this opportunity to listen to people. Uh, and so we should count this a really a great blessing. This Amen. Morning come in the house of the Lord and uh, hear his word read and Father and, and help, help us to uh, uh, understand his word more. So this morning we want to try to study a little bit in the book of 2 Corinthians. And we want to go to the 6th chapter. <clears throat> and we want to start in the 11th verse of, the, of chapter 6 where we'll be starting our reading this morning. Chapter 6, verse 11, 6 2 Corinthians. It says, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, and our heart is enlarged. Now, if when we start this, I um, mean you can read back in some of the things that Paul and, and uh, may, I think maybe Timothy here uh, was uh, having to, but they they were being discouraged quite a bit from uh people and they were discouraged and downhearted and this is the reason why that he is crying out to the Corinthians there that they might receive what that he is saying to them because he's telling them God's word and so he says O ye Corinthians our mouth is open unto you and listen this morning when we this brings it to our mind when we hear God's word read we need to have our minds open to it our ears open to it and and that we can digest it and we can remember it and take it in because this is what is true. I mean, Amen. There's, man's word sometimes explains things and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes right. man's word is not really what it should be, but God's word is true and we can depend on that. And when he says that uh, he's, that uh, their mouth was enlarged to him, he was he was crying out to them. He was pleading with them. And all through the scriptures, you find that Paul was in this position. And he, he, he loved them. And he took many, many abuse from the people that he was trying to tell about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they just did not accept him like he, that he would have them do. And so this is why he's talking to them. There, and this is the second time he's come to them. And he says in verse 12, Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own vows. And so this morning, uh, he's, he's, he's trying to convince these people to hear him and to understand what he's saying when he says, Now, for a recompense, in verse 13, in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye in also enlarged, and be understanding, be able to accept what what I'm saying to you because he says in verse 14 very good advice to all and to those that he was speaking to but he's talking to them about be he says be not unequally yoked together with Amen. unbelievers and this this morning is, is <coughs> our our warning this morning that we not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, and, and, and I've, I've said this a few times, but uh, concerning the yoke, and he, uh, when a yoke is something that brings people together in, in, in this, because the yoke was the old thing that went across the steer's neck when they pulled a load. Now, if, you're, if they had unequally yoked them and put a, uh, a say, a mule or, or something like that, on the other side of the, the oxen, they couldn't have pulled the load. They were right. in a zigzag like that. And he's saying here this morning, don't get in that condition. Don't be unequally yoked. In other words, uh, they were back in that day, They were, and we'll study it in a minute, but they were worshiping idols. And they were coming into the uh, sanctuaries, and, and some of them were worshiping idols, and some of them were worshiping men, and some of them were worshiping everything that could be worshiped. Uh, and here it's, it's talking about unequally yoked. Now, if you serve the Lord Jesus Christ this morning and you're saved and you're serving him, listen, you don't need to be 
yoked up or you don't need to be communicating or you don't need to be listening to someone that doesn't even know the Lord Jesus and his, his opinion is what somebody else has told him, what somebody else has told them and they got it all mixed up and you can go out here and worship your little st st uh, statues and Buddhas and things of this nature and you go in and, and you uh, are really uh, believing what he's saying that's unequally yoked. Right. And so this morning, that's what Paul was talking to them about. And there were so many things going on in that day and, and that time that that were uh, the people who had to, uh, were uh, uh, seeing and hearing and going on. And this is what he's, he, is, he is trying to encourage them with and to get them straightened out to be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers and unbelievers are those that don't believe in Christ and that's what the Bible says that an unbeliever is one that's not saved the one right. that's not, that's not uh, uh, that has not been saved that don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and so you can you can speak to them you can talk to them and maybe if you want to you can try to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ but you don't need to get in there uh, as the old saying as thick as feet because right. listen they will eventually, if they keep hammering at you and telling you this, and then you know, they cause you to doubt. Mm -hmm. And that, and you say, "Well, I wonder if that may be right." I may, I, and listen, when 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 you get in that condition, that is one of the dangers of being unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. And if it's your husband or your wife or your children or whatever your kin folks or something, they come into you, bringing something into you and telling you something like that. Listen, you don't need to hear it. You don't need to, because. Any time that a person tells you something, there's a part of your brain that will remember that. Mm -hmm. And listen, it may not come back to you for a, a month or two, or, but eventually you'll be reading something in the Bible and all of a sudden, hey, well, that's what he, he said something different than that. And then that's going to get you to doubt. And so this is a dangerous thing this morning mm -hmm. to be unequally yoked. And so uh, here he says, in verse the latter part of 14, he says, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, there is no fellowship right. with the devils, and, and we'll use it right here in just a minute, with the devil and with God, there's no fellowship there with you and with the lost person as far as God's word and all there shouldn't be any fellowship you shouldn't you can't you can't listen to them you can't you can't take their word so notice what it says about this year uh here uh and in verse last part 14 and what communion hath light with darkness now this communion is fellowship mm -hmm. and we know this morning that even in the book of genesis when god said let there be light and there was light, but the darkness comprehended it not. Right. And here again, he says here, and what communion or what fellowship hath light with darkness? Mm -hmm. They don't have no fellowship. Right. Because if one is there, the other one is gone. And that's that's the thing of it. This morning, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian and you are serving the Lord, you do not want to have anybody to come in and tell you well jesus christ was just a ordinary person or there was no jesus christ right or a, 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 a something like this because listen you say oh that's foolishness yeah it is foolishness to in, in in the sight of god but the thing of it is you're in the flesh and i'm in the flesh Amen. And listen this flesh has a tendency to take what other flesh says and that other flesh is if it's in if it's if it's darkness it's not saved and so you be careful uh even your closest relatives uh and, and when they come in and try to present something to you you beware because listen they may not know it but satan's using them right to cloud your mind and and uh and not let that light shine like it should shine in your life so he says here what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Beel? And Beel is the devil. And he says, what concord or what uh, what do they have in common? Uh, there is no common. There is right. nothing there. Because 
the 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 devil hates everything that God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit stand for, regardless of what it is, he hates it. Right. He his one his one his one desire is that he can bring one of us before God and say, now you see, he's sinning, he's doing this, and he's doing that. Listen, that's the reason why that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, that comes before God and says, I died for that person. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm telling you that my blood paid the atonement for that sin because if it didn't, and, and we see where that the devil comes uh, uh, concerning Job. And he said, yeah, Job, uh, you, you, you know, you said something around Job and I can't get to him. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same thing this morning when he comes to God. And listen, you, he's not bashful because he talked to Jesus and he said, uh, you, you uh, 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 do this and you do that. And, uh, uh, and Jesus said, get thee behind the Satan. Right. So this morning... We need to be very careful about how we're unequally yoked or how we associate with other people. And I'm not saying, hey, you need to turn your nose up at everybody or all your kin folks and, and just get out there and, and be a hermit or something like that. But listen, beware because, listen, what, what, is, what is going on is that your soul is, is the, the price or the, the thing that the devil wants to... Right to interrupt in or he wants to cause you never to accept the fact that Jesus Christ is your Savior and that he died for you. And he, if he can keep you away from these things and the thoughts of them, listen, he will. He'll interfere in any way he can. And so this being yoked with the devil is, 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 is very, very, very dangerous. Notice in verse 15, uh, 16, or 15, and what concord hath Christ with Baal, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, an infidel being an unbeliever, and he said, what, there's, there's nothing that, 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 that uh, can go on with an unbeliever. If he's an unbeliever, he's just an unbeliever. He's lost and he's on his road to hell. And if, if the Lord don't uh, speak to his soul, listen, that's where you'll wind up. And this is what he says here. He says, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? I hope this morning and pray that there's no nobody here that will would 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 uh, even consider consider even uh, believing anything that infidel. Because listen, you it's out there, and mm -hmm. all you have to do is just turn the TV on or go to some of these uh, false churches, and they're they're teaching things that's that's false. And if it's false, it's false, and it's false. Amen. And, that, and so this morning he says in verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Now listen, what he's bringing out here is that they put idols in the temple to worship. And back in the, in, in the, in the old days there, and, and he's asking them, what, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So here the temple, and what agreement had it uh, he's, with these idols? We should not have no idols. We Amen. should not be a worshiper of anything, anything, worship anything, even at, in this world, because it is, it is, it is undesirable to God. Now I want to I want to go this morning, if you would, to First Corinthians just a minute and see something here in verse uh, 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 three. First Corinthians three, and verse. Now it's three. I'm sorry, three Corinthians, three, chapter three of First Corinthians, verse uh, sixteen. I'll get it right in a minute here. I'm sorry. In verse 16 of chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And we're, we're speaking over here and in, in the verse 16 of our, of our lesson, and what agreement hath the temple of God? He says here, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And the thing of it is, this temple is worldly and it's 
uh, it's it's uh, like a something that they used to make on his wheel, and it, it breaks real. It's very easy. It's very weak. Mm -hmm. But he says here, know ye that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, people, we 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 need to understand that this morning that we that are saved, the 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 we are the temple of God. Amen. And and, and this morning that the Spirit dwelleth in us. And he says, uh, and if any man defile or destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. That's you this Amen. morning within your body, your, your body. And, of course, we, we look down on the old body because it's sinful flesh. But yet it has a purpose in this world and that is to carry our souls around and also the for god's spirit dwells with us in in this old body and so this morning we need to take care of this body we don't need to do things to it that are wrong and he says here for the if we defile it and and that is if we use it in the wrong way or, or let things happen to it he says if any man def defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. And so this morning, you need to take good care of your, of your body. And you need, to, you need to use it for the glory and honor of God. And this morning, you can't get out here and hormone around and drink and gamble and cuss right. and all these things and serve the Lord. And it's a, it's a, it's a disgrace for people to do this right but the thing of it is they're unrighteous mm -hmm. and so here and this is the reason why he says that he'll destroy it because that person that dies lost that that body and that that body like it is now will wind up in a devil's hell and here he says here and god god and God shall destroy it for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So don't never let nobody uh, make you think that uh, you haven't got something precious with this body, because it's it's the it's the temple, it's the carrying thing of the Holy Spirit. Now let no man in verse 18 let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise. In this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Amen. Now, in, in, in the, I, want to, I want to read you something this morning in the book of Proverbs uh, concerning the fool. And it's Proverbs 3, 5, and it's just a short reading. If you want to turn there, you can. If you don't, well, uh, just listen. But I, I don't want to read it to you so that you can see it. But in Proverbs 3 and verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Amen. And it shall be health to thy navel. Uh, and marrow to thy bones, and and, and this the, these things here uh, are, is the parts of the body, especially the marrow, the bone, and all this, where that uh, all the substance and everything uh, keeps the body going. But he says, uh, "Be not wise in thy own eyes; fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow and to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance." and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Now listen, this morning he's talking about this old flesh that we have and it being the temple of, a, of the, sp the spirit that is saved, with, it, it's saved and it's a house of the Lord in type. And he says here, honor the Lord with thy substance. And that's, that, that's with your ability to uh, speak to other people. That's your ability to sing songs of praise to them. That's your ability to pray. That's your ability to do anything that you do with the body. Do it in the name of the Lord. And he says, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And that means this morning that we should honor the Lord when he blesses us. With anything, we should honor him with that, and we should we should help 
uh, uh, others with our, our increases. And, but most of all this morning, I believe that the Lord desires for us every Sunday that we honor him. If he has increased us, and listen, it, it don't have to be in money. It don't have to be in a new home or nothing like this. But listen, just the health and strength of this body that's walking around, if he keeps it going and, and, and keeps it healthy, we need to honor him. If nothing else, let's pray Amen. for him and singing songs of praise and just a shout hallelujah. Uh, but we need to praise the Lord. And notice, listen in verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy press it, and they press shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his corrections. And so here's another thing with the body that we need to do, and that is not to not to despise the chastening of the Lord because a lot of times he will he will chasten us through the this fleshly body he will he will chasten us sometimes through other things but listen we are not to despise that because if we know that that's coming from the Lord he is wanting to he is shaking our shoulder he's wanting to get our attention and letting us know hey you're out of line right. and you need to straighten up and, you, and maybe your bodies are, are being defiled in some way, and you need to quit that. And so here he says, here, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. And that's us this morning. Amen. That he, he corrects us. And so happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. And so this morning, I hope that some of these things here that we're reading here would, would encourage you in, in, your, in your everyday walk and how to take care of your body and to uh, 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 do that. So uh, in ver back in our lesson now, in verse 18 of the of, uh, third chapter of 1 Corinthians, let no, <clears throat> and no man deceive himself, if any among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. And that, that don't mean uh, in the way of, of stupidness and all this, but listen, we, and, and Paul said he was a fool for Christ. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, we need to take what Paul says and use it wisely, and we need to be, uh, uh, as the world would say it, foolish enough to believe what God says. Mm -hmm. Because listen, what God says is right, and the sinner Amen. out here, the sinner out here, does not accept what God says. And so this morning He's saying here, "Let him become a fool that he may be wise." For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. And this morning, those that are going along and saying that God's uh, the the things that we do to serve the Lord and the things that we uh, even uh, people will laugh at you and scorn you because that you try to support the church with tithes and offerings. Listen, it's 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 it's, a, it's crazy to, to people. People say, you know, and and, and, and you know, and even they try to attend church. I'm not going to go down there and give give them all my money. But listen, what did he say over there? He said. Your barns, I'm gonna fill them up. Mm -hmm. You just, you just honor me. You just honor me with a little of what I have given you because, hey, it's all mine to start with. And he don't, he don't make it. He don't make it that plain. But the thing of this, we as God's people need to understand and be smart enough to know that what we, what we get out here and do. And we say, I work for that. Well, listen, maybe you did, and, and glory to you. But the thing of it is, where does your healthy body come from? Right. Well, it don't come from the world because the world, the only way the world will help you is to give you a pill. And so this morning, that's something we need to consider uh, as, we, as we live this life. So here in verse 20, and again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain, mm -hmm. foolish, the, 
the thoughts of the wise, and that's the reason why up in verse 18 he says, let him come a fool that he may be wise. And so the, the, the wisdom of this world, and he said that it is foolishness to him. And so therefore, in verse 24, let, there, let no man glory in man, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God. Amen. Notice again, I want you to see one more thing in 2 Corinthians this morning, in the, in the fourth chapter, I believe it is. I'm going to read something to you. And I'll be through. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Four and verse five. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And Paul is just telling them, and he's he's still trying to tell them, hey, I'm not out here. I'm not out here to condemn you. I'm not out here, but just to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, your servants of Jesus, say, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in your in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Amen. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, and that's he's talking about his his body. We have this treasure in earthen body of vessels that the Excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. And this is something this morning that we should understand as much as possible and, and pray that God will give us a more understanding and more uh, understanding of this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed and these are some of the things this morning that will happen to uh, God's people in this world and it's happened it's history it's history and it's history and it's future 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 because listen the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and one of the, his things is is, put, is persecuting and, 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 and hurting people so he says here Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. In verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Mm -hmm. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or revealed in our bodies mortal flesh and so again it comes back to this temple that we have listen it is an important thing amen it is an important thing and we don't need to deface it uh you take uh, uh all of these things that uh, you see these people going around with all these tattoos and all of these things on them listen it shouldn't be amen it shouldn't be amen because it's an advertisement it's just an advertisement just like you put Ride it on a on a big truck, and and it drives down the road. When you go down there and you see these tattoos and all this, listen, it shouldn't be. Amen. And they don't understand it, maybe, but the thing of it is, that's that's sin. So 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 here he says in verse uh, verse eleven, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And so he's saying here that death, and he was, the death he was talking about was a physical death. And listen, he's, I mean, he's dying, and uh, he knew it, but he says, so then death worketh in us, but life in you, eternal life. He's trying to tell them that the, the, the things that he's suffering is causing death. But he said, I'm trying to tell you about the things that are precious to you and that, that will uh, give you eternal life. Yeah. In verse 13, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore 
have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. Amen. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, for but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. So again, the, this old body that we're talking about, he says it's it's perishing day by day, and it does. And, and you can look at me and look at some of them pictures 25 years ago, and you can tell them different. It's perishing, but the thing of it is. I try to take care of it as best I can, and my wife helps me a whole lot too. And so we uh, uh, we try to try to keep healthy, and I think that's something that we all should do because mm -hmm. listen, it's something that we we've, we've got that we can use to honor the Lord mm -hmm. and, and, and glorify His name, and also what it's got inside. It's got what's going to go to be with the Lord when this old body dies. Right. And so this is uh, this is some of the things this morning that I seen in the lesson and I hope that uh, I hope that some of this will uh, uh, stay with you and uh, you can praise the Lord for it. So we thank you so much for listening. Amen.